Hey everyone, I'm Tech Steve, and on this video, I'm gonna show you guys some more features that can be used on just about any Samsung television set that's from the 2019 to 2020 series. Now, if you have this remote control with the voice command, the one of the first features I'm gonna show you is how to switch it over to Amazon Alexa and some options that you can do with it. We're also gonna talk about the screen sharing option. I'm gonna hook it up to a computer. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna answer some of the questions that you guys asked me on my previous videos. So sit back and relax. And let's get started. The first thing you want to do is go into your settings menu, then go down to general and under general, go ahead and press voice. Now, right now set up for Bixby. All you need to do is go ahead and click on it and toggle over to Alexa, then press OK. And from the website, go ahead and enter that code at the bottom of the screen once you log in, then press continue. And that's pretty much it. It's all set up. I found TV. You can start using voice commands just by pressing and holding down the microphone on the Samsung remote control. You can start giving it commands. Like for example, there's a light in front of the TV set. Turn on Echo Glow. Turn Echo Glow red. And you can do other commands like, what's the weather like in San Diego, California? In San Diego, it's 73 degrees Fahrenheit with partly sunny skies. What's the weather like in London? Currently, in London, United Kingdom, it's 61 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. Tell me a joke. What's a pirate's favorite letter? You might think it's R, but his first love be the C. <laughs> Play today's hottest hits. Playing billboard songs, available in Prime Music. What's 3,000 divided by 566? 3,000 divided by 566 is 5.3004. So that's a really good feature is if you have an Amazon Alexa system in your house, now you can use a television set to connect to a lot of the same things. You can also go into your Amazon application on your phone and tweak it out just a little bit more if you like. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to use the Apple AirPlay. It's very easy. All you need to do is go over here to settings again, go down to general. Then you wanna go down to Apple AirPlay settings. And under required codes is where you find all your different password settings. So I'm going to just do it first time only, but you can do it every time or password instead. Now we got that set up. Let me show you the phone. Here I have an iPhone 7 Plus. If you slide up from the bottom, you get this screen. Press screen mirroring and then press Q60. You want to use the code that popped up on the screen. And you can see everything I do on the screen is actually displaying right here on the television set. And this is the new iOS 14. Just trying out the beta here. And to make it stop, all you need to do is slide up again from the bottom, press on screen mirroring, then press on stop mirroring. So real quick, this is a list of all the different Samsung TV sets at this point that are compatible with the AirPlay 2. And Apple also has requirements so if you have older software on your Apple device, it may not be compatible, but here's a list that Apple put out that is gonna be compatible with this television set. And for people who have PCs and Android devices, now I'm gonna show you guys how you can use the screen sharing. But I will tell you, it didn't work perfect for me. Let's check it out. Under the source, you would go to remote access. And you can see the features right here under functions. Now I'm gonna attempt and see if I can get this to work from a PC. So what you would do on a PC, just go down to the bottom and type in projector. And then go ahead and open that up. Now you should get a slide bar so you can show just your PC screen. You can duplicate it, extend it, or use the screen as a second monitor. So let's do the second monitor. And then you wanna do is click on wireless display. Now what it's doing is searching for all the different devices that are compatible and you can see the Q60 popped up right there. Let's go and press on it. On the TV screen, it found my laptop. Now it's trying to connect with it. Now it's showing that my laptop is connected to the TV, but for some reason, I don't see a screen. After a few attempts, I got this pop-up. Try to use a mobile device instead. So let's try that. So the first thing we're gonna do is try it on a Google Pixel phone. So I downloaded the Samsung Smart View application and it looks like it's gonna expire October 2020. So let's see if it can find the television set. So it looks like it did right here on the TV and all I need to do is allow it. 
But look at the application. It shows no TB found, even though I just got this pop-up to accept it. So now let's try this Samsung device. Now it has Smart View built in. You see right there when you drop it down twice. And it did find the TV set. And look at that, it connected right away. And let me try to pull up a picture here just to see if it can display it. And yep, there it is. So that's how you use screen view if you want to try it out. Your computer may work and uh, your phone may work, but it looks like Samsung works with Samsung. For some reason, I just couldn't get this TV to work with my computer using that projector mode. But if you guys have a Samsung TV, go try it out and let me know what computer you're using, also which TV you're using, so we can kind of figure this out. Now, if you're planning on using an HDMI cable, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when you hook a computer up directly. So right now you're looking at the Q60T hooked up to a laptop. But when you do this, you need to change a few things to get the most resolution. So even though this is a 4K TV, I kind of like to leave it in high definition mode, but if you guys want to see it on 4K, let's take a look. If you're running a PC, just right click on the mouse, go down to display settings, and once you're in there, you want to identify the different screens. So right now, this is screen two. Scroll down here, and then you can change this to a higher resolution. And watch what happens when I put it in 4K mode. It's going to get so small, it's almost unusable. So most people won't use this in 4K when they're doing this. They're just going to keep it like at 1080p or something like that. At the 4K resolution, this gives you an example of what Excel looks like. But as you can see, it's so small that you probably just want to leave it at like a 1080p resolution. All right, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. But before I do that, I just want to answer some of you guys' questions from the YouTube channel. And I do appreciate you guys watching my videos so much. Now, I will tell you that I don't work for Samsung. These are my own ideas. This is video footage that I put together to help you guys out. And I hope it is helping a lot of you guys out. And I can see it on here that a lot of you guys are appreciative and you really like all the details I go over. So if you guys uh, really like these kind of videos, I'll make more of them, but it takes time to make them. And I have to go buy the TV set to support it. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and get into some of these questions you guys have and at the end of this video I'm going to show you guys the video footage on a Q60T because I didn't show it in my last video. So it looks like some of you guys are having problems with the TU7000 that looks dark. Well a few people have posted that it was a firmware update but in general HDR and movies kind of look dark to me anyway so you might have to mainly override it by going into the brightness and taking that picture profile and see if you can brighten it up just a little bit. But Again, HDR content is pretty dark in general. Now, a lot of people are asking about the Google Assistant and the Amazon Alexa that's not built into the television set. Well, I made two videos about that on the RU7100 and it all works the same. So basically what you would do is you would take the Amazon Alexa and you would log it in as a skill with the SmartThings application. And on the Google, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to log into the Google Home app and you're going to set it up as a added device. But I will tell you guys that it doesn't work that great. It's going to do some very basic things. I don't even know if this point is worth having unless the TV set has it built in. Also, when a television goes in standby mode, it seems that the Wi-Fi is disconnecting. So you cannot turn the device back on once you turn it off after a period of time. So it just seems like a lot of TV sets do that. So I probably wouldn't even hook it up, but at least they print it on the box and it looks like an option. Also, I want to tell you guys, I made an honest mistake on some of the videos because I don't talk about what kind of panels they're made out of. And quite frankly, whenever you look at data sheets and the manufacturer websites, they don't really tell you these things unless it's printed. And some companies don't tell you the NIST or anything like that. So most Samsung TV sets are VA panels that are backlit, just so you guys know. Another question people are asking is, do these TV sets have headphone jacks? And they don't. They kind of got rid of that. And most new TV sets have Bluetooth connections. And with the fiber optic only output, there's an issue if you have older audio equipment. For example, if you have analog inputs, you're not able to use these TV sets without an adapter. But the good thing is I made a video on this $18 uh, adapter. And that allows you to convert the fiber optic over to analog. So you can actually use this TV set to uh, run some of that older equipment. Some other question you guys are asking, can you use these television set without the internet? 
Well, the reality of it is, is all TVs out now are smart televisions that almost require the internet. But to answer your questions, no, you do not need the internet. If you go into the menu, you can actually turn off all the smart pop-ups. And with that being said, you can hook up an antenna to it and you can scan for digital channels or use a cable box. And you can also uh, just use it on the inputs. So a few of you guys want to know if you take a United States TV set, will it work over in the UK? And I'm going to say that it will, but it won't. And this is why I say that if you use just a regular like screw on type antenna, well, United States uses NTSC that really goes around 29 to 30 frames per second. And whenever you go to Europe, if you just use regular television, then that's actually 25 frames per second. Also, United States TV sets are 60 hertz, UK televisions are 50 hertz. But here's a good thing. If you can find a good power supply, you can still plug it into like a gaming system and use the inputs as long as it's running, you know, like 60 frames per second because the TV would actually upconvert it to the right source. Here's another question. Now, since the TV has built in Samsung television and it also has the built in TV tuner, they want to know if you can record with the built in settings using the USB. And after looking at the settings, it doesn't seem like it's an option. Also, there's no picture in picture anymore as well. So I hope to answer some of you guys' questions. And if you do have additional questions, you can always leave it in the comments below and we can all help each other to get those questions answered. But for now, I want to show you guys the picture quality on the Q60T. So I hope this video helped you guys out. And just in case you didn't know, I have the LG UN 7300, the 2020 series, and I will be filming that video in the next few weeks because I have some vendors that I'm working with in the next few videos that I'm gonna make. But I'm gonna say I really appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you go and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Peace.